Welcome into the neighborhood. My name is David Sim. I'm creative director at Gale in Copenhagen. I'm an architect and a planner, and I work with designing healthy, sustainable, livable communities, neighborhoods, towns, cities. Um, I'm originally from Scotland, so I hope you understand my English. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the work we do and also about my book, Soft City, which I guess is the, the, the big subject we're going to talk about today. And I guess you might wonder, what is a soft city? The Sachte Stadt. We talk about here building density for everyday life. And I guess in the Danish version, we even call it density, diversity and proximity in everyday life. And so something about the things that are close to you, close to where you live, in your neighborhood. And the softness, well, the softness, I guess, it's about people because people make things soft. So rather than thinking about, you know, the, the physical, the architecture, um, the buildings, all of that hard stuff, it's really thinking more about, about the people, the people that live in a place and their life. And to say soft, I guess, the first thought I had about soft was something to do with um, responsiveness. And I guess when we talk about neighbor, neighborhood, a neighbor is such a good word because it's not a planning word. It's not a technical term. It's a word that everybody understands because you have a neighbor. Um, you've got, you know, you've got the guy next door, you've got neighbor like mankind, you've got neighbor in the Bible. Um, and so we understand that the people that are close to us, but also different from us. And that gives us a relationship. And everything that we do in the, in the built environment, when we build a neighborhood, a house, a street, it's to do with relationships. Relationships between people and place. Um, relationships between people and the planet, because we've got the weather, climate, and so on. And of course, relationships between people and people. And if we take care of those relationships, we can make a good place will make people feel comfortable in what they're doing, make them be more comfortable with difference, being outside in different weathers, and so on. And so the softness is about connecting, having a soft relationship. And you could say, well, what, what makes a good relationship? And this is maybe a very personal thing, but it's kind of like, you know, what makes a good relationship? Um, somebody said to me, it's, it's knowing when to open up and knowing when to shut up. You know, and that, maybe that's something you have to think about, like, <clears throat> how do we um, get on with other people? And sometimes we need to open up, be spontaneous um, and very friendly. And sometimes we know we have to be more reserved and more kind of discreet. And it's that kind of like both sides of things that we have to take care of. And I guess with relationships, it's um, we kind of like are a little bit like human beings. We need a little bit of both. We need sometimes we want to be outgoing open, um, living out in the world, and sometimes we want to be more private and discreet. We need, we need both things. We need sociability and also privacy. And I guess in, my, in the back of my mind, these are the things that we try to create. Now, a big turning point in my life was I met a professor called Jan Gale. And Jan Gale wrote a book called Life Between Buildings. And it's a very simple book, but it talks about these relationships between people and place and people and people. And it talks about how if we take care of the details, the little things, we can actually make a very convenient, comfortable and convivial environment where we want to be sociable with other people, being close to other people, experiencing things. And I guess the softness is also about the senses. Like, you know, you don't just see a place, but you, you smell it, you touch it, you hear it. So using all of the senses, that's soft too. And Jan Gale talked about the soft edge of a building. And that's a little bit where the name soft comes from. You have like a, a cafe terrace and the tables and chairs move outside, maybe some umbrellas and people start to inhabit the outside space. And that's kind of soft because as you walk along, there's an in-between space. It's not inside, halfway outside. And people 
lingering for longer on this edge. This is kind of soft. And I suppose I was thinking this could be nice if the city in every dimension was soft, not just the cafe terrace or the edge of the building, but how could we make a city that's soft, convenient, comfortable, convivial in every aspect? And that was the story of, of Soft City. And that's how I came to write a book. And if you look at the front cover, maybe it looks a little bit like, uh, like a children's book because of the way it's illustrated. But in the same way, those children's picture books filled with life, I wanted to explain how a city could work, a town or even a village could work. If we think about this human scale and all these relationships and all these different things that can happen inside a town, a village or a city. One way of saying what's the book about is it's about the simple things that work, the simple details. It's not about the architecture with a capital A and the big axis like, the, like in the Houseman Boulevard or something. It's about the simple little details that promote better relationships for people between inside and outside, between people and other people, between people and, and a sense of place, giving them maybe identity, pride, a feeling of belonging, a feeling of ownership. So the book's kind of got three main subjects and it was kind of addressing some of the big challenges we're facing now. One of the biggest challenges that everybody's talking about is urbanization, that we have to build denser, we have to build more, we have to make more apartments, more buildings, more houses for more people. And that's very scary, especially for a small community. Um, the idea of being invaded by denser, higher buildings, it doesn't sound nice. So one of the first things I wanted to prove, I wanted to show it was possible to have a human scale, although it got denser, and even if we brought in more diverse functions and activities, it could still feel human and friendly and people should be comfortable. And I'll show you in a minute a little bit how we can put the city together and how those differences might work. So one of the things I really want to stress is the idea that density doesn't need to mean height. So this is a little model of an urban quarter um, with these well-known Danish bricks. Um, and one of these bricks represents like one floor. And if you see like this kind of area, an average four stories, it's a very nice kind of human scale. Um, it's actually surprisingly dense because if we were to build something like, you know, like we see in some of those kind of suburbs of the, of the 1960s, actually you'll discover because you need to have the spaces between the buildings to let the light in, that very often the, the buildings, these modernist buildings are actually not any denser than the environments that the people say are not dense enough. And so if you imagine like every country has these modernist housing estates with these kind of tall blocks. But what's really shocking is that very often the density of them is no better than the density of the, the human scale. And we have to ask ourselves, which scale do we think will be a nice environment for people? Is it the low one or is it the one with towers? Because the higher we go, you need to have bigger spaces between the buildings. And this means the guy who lives up here, he's really far. It doesn't take him 30 seconds to go outside. It takes him eight, nine minutes to go outside. Um, also, he can't, you know, if he opens his window, you know, his, you know, his curtains will blow away. Um, and of course, what's happening down on the ground is pretty much irrelevant for the guy who lives up here. So I think very often when we're talking about building communities, building places, we talk a lot about the architecture. And of course, buildings can look very, very different. We maybe have some idea of what we think is a nice house. Others have maybe another, another language of what they think. But the biggest risk is not the different styles, but actually the, the thing that things are not built together. And if every house stands alone, what we get is a very similar kind of like non-landscape. Nothing really fits together. There's no clear front or back. It's really hard to know where you belong. So if the, if the carnival guy comes along, where, where is it appropriate to have the carnival? You know, 
Um, the carnival people, that's kind of annoying if they come in your in your back garden. Um, you know, where is it? Where am I supposed to ride my bike? You know, where's that appropriate? You know, and where can I sunbathe? Can I be in my bikini? Can I be in my swimming trunks? Is that appropriate in a public place? But if we organize the buildings in a different way, and I mean, and one of the most simple things that you can do in, in, in building is to create enclosure. So we kind of build like, like a courtyard. And we'll quite simply, we put the buildings together and you stand here, you have, you kind of have like an inside and an outside and everybody knows, well, the public stuff that goes on outside and inside here, we actually have quite a nice peaceful place, more microclimate, maybe the trees will, uh, will grow better here. I can do some gardening. And then actually maybe in my little corner garden, I can be sunbathing in my swimming trunks. You know, my cat can be safe playing and those things can happen. And so you can have these two worlds side by side. You can have the busy street, the cafe and the bakery, people riding their bikes and their car, driving their cars. Um, but at the same time, you can have this inner world, which is the private world, the front and the back. It's one of the most simple things, but very often we don't do it. And as soon as the buildings start standing on their own and you open up, suddenly people get exposed and then they don't feel so comfortable, they go inside, you know, and people don't know, I don't know if I'm allowed to cycle and the life disappears because people don't really know what's allowed and where things belong. We have a kind of more abstract lifestyle, uh, uh, an abstract urban landscape. People don't know where to belong. So I think this idea of how we simply put the different buildings together is incredibly important for making a good place. Mm -hmm.